Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock's Eyes. Welcome to my channel. So this video is a VR to Natalia over at Ouroboros channel or Ouroboros channel, whichever way you pronounce it. Um, and she did a five part series on shadow work, um, also discussing tarot and shadow work, which I found very interesting, very fascinating. But she asked in one or maybe a few of those, um, if anyone used tarot for shadow work, because she felt that you can't use tarot for shadow work, but you can use tarot to help understand and integrate your shadow aspects. And I, I agree on using tarot as tools to understand deeper and deeper and deeper because there's layers um, and integrating aspects of our shadows that have come to light. Um, but she didn't feel that tarot itself could reveal shadow aspects because shadow aspects are subconscious so they're not in our conscious awareness and I want to point out the word conscious um, the con comes from Latin cum and the shus like sh science conscience um, it comes from the word skio skire which means to know so when things are conscious they're with our knowledge when things are subconscious they're below our knowledge. So technically shadow is not aware. We're not aware of our shadow. It's only when we, when some shadow comes to light and then we work on it, we integrate it. It's technically no longer a shadow though. There can be aspects and I want to say layers of archetypal energies that can similar to the shadow that has been revealed within our subconscious. So this VR, I want to talk about how I have used tarot for myself and with clients, not very often with clients, but it does come up, um, how tarot has revealed shadow aspects to me or them. And I'll just use a few examples here. Um, and brought them to our awareness to then continue to work on and work with and work on integrating. And that could be a very long process. And Natalia pointed that out too. It can take weeks, months, years, an entire lifetime or more to really integrate shadow aspects. It really depends on each of our individual lives and what we've experienced and all the emotions that that triggers for us. So her example, Natalia's example for um, how a shadow comes to light, how we can find shadows within ourselves. So her example was like a wealthy neighbor and you get really pissed off every time you see that wealthy neighbor and you say all these things about them in their head, but you really don't know anything about them. You're projecting your, you know, whatever your shadow is. It could be the belief that you don't deserve to be wealthy like that wealthy neighbor. The belief that, you know, if you have money, you're a bad person. You know, it could be different for each person. There could be multiple projections. And it's when you realize like, whoa, I'm saying all these things about this neighbor and making up this personality for them in my head when I don't know anything about them. That's when you realize that's me projecting onto them. That's the, you could thought the aha moments like, oh, I have some shadow issues with that. And then you begin to explore, you begin to unravel, you dig deeper, and then you begin to integrate. And again, this can take years, a lifetime, and I think sometimes many lifetimes. Okay. And it's really the emotional, that intense emotional response, or you can call it an emotional trigger get you all riled up, makes you uncomfortable. And you know, I often like point out that shadow aspects are things about ourselves we don't like. And one thing Natalia's first video like pointed out to me was that I need to make sure I'm phrasing things correctly when I talk about shadow. I'm not the end all be all expert, but I've done a lot of work with it. Um, when I say shadow aspect, aspects are parts of ourselves we don't like, we've suppressed, we don't want to know, 
it's the it's a subconscious not liking <laughs> aspects of ourselves because once we're conscious that there's a part of ourselves we don't like then it's no longer shadow it's become come to conscious conscious awareness it's in our it's in our knowing and then we choose or not to work with that right and work to integrate it i hope this is making sense so the first thing that came to my mind when i thought well yeah tarot can trigger Tarot cards can trigger those intense emotional responses, like Natalia's example of reacting to a wealthy neighbor. And I'll link her video towards the end of this video. And I'll also link, I saw um, Jules at Cosmic, Cosmic Spirit and Books VR to this too. I'm going to link that on screen here for you to watch too, um, because I thought her video was very fascinating as well. Um, so tarot cards, specific tarot cards, different ones for different people can trigger those same types of intense emotional responses or possibly what comes up in a reading via the channeling or translation of the reader. And the person receiving the reading, whether it's like you're reading for yourself or you're reading for someone else, the recipient, the querent, the seeker may have a reaction that is a projection onto the card, and I want to say more specifically, onto the archetypal energy that comes up from a card, and it's their shadow that is reacting and projecting. Will the querent or the seeker realize that if it's you or you're reading for someone else? You know, that depends. But I think the shadow can be revealed and those intense emotional triggers that make us project, that make our shadows come out, peek out <laughs> from the darkness, do appear in tarot cards. So just like the wealthy neighbor in Natalia's example, that is an archetype or at least the impression, even if you know you don't know that wealthy neighbor, the impression is the archetype of the super wealthy person that flaunts their stuff and doesn't give to anyone else and just, you know, lives life to the fullest and doesn't care about other people or whatever you want to think. It's an archetype, an archetypal energy of the highly affluent person who feels they're better than anyone else and doesn't give back when in reality they might be totally different right i'm sort of making up an archetype here i haven't given it a name but the rich man archetype we'll call it that the rich man archetype and i think most people understand what i mean and if you're not sure think of like rich man stereotypes right what are the, what's the stereotype of a super wealthy rich man that a lot of people think of so, as I was getting to before, the number one example that came up with tarot as triggering that emotional intense reaction um, within a person, triggering their shadow to project, is the hero font. And I pulled two out, and I tried, decided to pull two out, inspired by Jules' video this morning. Again, her channel is Cosmic Spirit and Books because her example was her work with the emperor and she went through a whole bunch of book resources. So if you want a lot of book resources, she has a whole bunch there, a lot of great books. Some I've read, some I haven't. Um, because different cards and different decks can trigger that intense emotional reaction of the shadow and other ones might not. So you can see two different examples of the Hierophant and this hand, this is the Toth or Thoth Tarot, and this is the Morgan Greer, which is a very standard Rider Waite Smith deck. There's a very loud airplane going overhead. Hope, hope that's not too loud. Now, a lot of people are triggered by the Hero font in any deck, actually, um, because of their religious upbringing. I'll just hold this one up for ease. Sometimes he's called the Pope in decks. He represents you know, traditional religion, organized religion. And especially people raised in a tra Catholic tradition that was very fundamental or extreme are triggered by the Hierophant. It brings up a lot of stuff. 
And I'm ta not talking about trauma or spiritual abuse. Um, that's a totally different thing. What I'm talking about is like the Hierophant triggering something within you that says, oh, I hate that card. That's all those men, the patriarchy, the religious patriarch that wants to control me and tell me what to do. Now that actual situation may have been true, but for the example of a shadow being triggered by this, you may realize, okay, I'm not in that situation. I'm projecting what I think this Hierophant or this Pope is to me in my reading. And therefore it kind of overshadows your reading. Instead of seeing it in, in a view or in a light, in a light in which it can be beneficial to me in this reading that I'm having. And there may be something within the person who re reacts, for example, to the Hierophant that actually likes the structure of organized religion and they just haven't found their religion yet. That likes, the, that likes to have a guiding father figure, yet they haven't found one that they trust or like. So there can be something within the person that they see in that. And it can be positive and negative. So Natalia pointed this out and it's so true. Shadows aren't necessarily all bad things. They can be good things. So this could be triggering an intense emotional response for someone from their shadow that is a very pious and holy person. Yet because of their experience with their religion, they've stuffed that away. And they don't want to acknowledge that it's there because then they feel like, they have to be part of that religion or something or whatever it may be. So yeah, tarot cards, especially what I've seen a lot actually is the Hierophant triggering the shadow with the people. Do they recognize it then? Maybe, maybe not. But I think it can reveal to people if they're open to seeing it, aspects of their shadow. Now, another card I was just kind of flipping through seeing what cards, what kind of archetypal energies might be triggering for some people, because I wanted to give a second example. And I pulled from the Morgan Greer, the lover's card, and from the Thoth Tarot Lust. So I would say both these cards kind of depict, you know, in the keyword, not so much in the image on the Thoth, and in the image on the lover's card in the Morgan Greer Tarot, you know, lust, sexual intimacy, sexual pleasure, that can be triggering for a lot of people who have suppressed their sexual side or their sexuality, who have been told, you know, to, you know, not hold hands in public, to not kiss in public, whatever it may be, any way that someone has suppressed their sexual intimacy or their ability to be emotionally intimate as well. These cards, or, you know, especially with the word lust there, people who were told, say, as a child that, you know, lusting for things is bad, 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 when really it's just, oh, I desire that, and, you know, we need to evaluate why and so on as adults. But just that word lust has such a negative connotation that that can trigger something within someone and their shadow can then project and be like, oh, I hate those cards. These cards are bad or that's disgusting or, you know, I don't want a lover like that or whatever the reaction might be. But I do feel definitely tarot can trigger can open up, can bring up, I was gonna say boil up, <laughs> because often it comes out in like, you know, intense emotions like anger or disgust or even fear. Those shadow aspects that we then project on, you know, if this comes up in a reading, if this is an issue for someone, if sexual intimacy has been suppressed, their desire to be, you know, they're just their natural desire for sexual intimacy 
if that comes up, they may project it onto the person giving them the reading and saying, well, disgusting cards or whatever, right? It will come out in like, you know, angry, frustrated, finger pointing emotions. Okay. So another thing, another tool, so it's not just tarot cards, it's also oracle cards, some oracle decks that can help open up shadow aspects. And so when I was thinking about this, because I thought about this in my live <laughs> for the 24 hour new beginning 2020 event, oh. my own deck, the fine lines, 44 meditations for intentional living. This is, I created this not so much thinking that, oh, this is a tool for shadow work, but it, it's a tool for shadow work. So I have a few examples here. Um, and the cards just have words on them, vintage paper backgrounds, but it's something versus something else. The first one can be seen more as sort of the light aspect and the second one a little bit more of the shadow aspect, but that can be flipped too, because again, shadow aspects aren't all like negative. They can be really good things, you know? So the first one I have is gratitude versus indebtedness. You know, if someone's working with these two energies, you know, gratitude, so I'm a grateful person, I'm a da da da. But, you know, they do something kind for someone, they may hold it over their head. Or if someone does something kind for them, they may be like, oh, I'm in debt to that person. You know, it's, it's, it's a side within us that we may not realize is there. So hence a shadow. And by working with a deck like this, those things can come to light. And then again, it's continuous work to understand it, understand why it's there, to start integrating it, to working with it, to embracing it. And again, that takes a long time. It takes practice. So I had gratitude versus indebtedness just to give you some examples in love versus in lust of course then there's working you know someone's triggered by lust whole other layer to this then there's vulnerability versus victimhood does someone play the victim does someone use an old wound to manipulate other people and they point that out in everybody else but they don't see it within themselves that's a shadow do you teach or do you tell people what to do when you think you're teaching and guiding other people but you're just being bossy so that's a you know an oracle tool i call them meditation cards meditation guidance oracle cards that can be used if you want to purposely <laughs> work with revealing some shadow aspects within yourself and i did also make a very large <laughs> very large workbook with prompts for each of them if this is something you're interested in since it is a great tool for shadow work with a page of prompts there's definitions on top and then prompts, and then 10 pages of journaling pages, um, 10 pages of journaling pages, 10 pages for journaling for each of the 44 fine lines. So that is a, a great tool for some shadow work and how deep or shallow you get into a shadow or the shadow of a particular archetypal energy within you, you know, it's up to you, but it is continuous work. It's like, it's like a spiritual practice and practice is called practice because you keep doing it. You're not perfect at the start. There's more to learn. The further you go, the more you do and it grows and grows. Okay. So that is my little VR of yes, <laughs> it is possible to use tarot and even Oracle cards for revealing the shadow work as well as and Natalia pointed this out, as well as understanding and integrating the shadow. But I think it can be triggered and revealed by some tarot cards in some decks, um, dark decks, light decks. It's really going to depend on the person. All right, everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking. Share this with, with someone whom you think it might help. And I'll see you back here soon.